Hey guys, welcome to the channel. We're very happy to have you here and if you're new to this channel, please make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of these interesting videos. Today, we're going to talk about this guy known as the wise fool. Who is this person? By definition, wisdom is the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment, the quality of being wise. In short, somebody who is wise, somebody who can make good decisions, and somebody who seems smart. So, someone with wisdom is considered very wise, right? Well, mostly, but not this person that we're going to look at today. Who was this wise fool? First of all, that's a very unconventional and clashing title to give to someone. I mean, a person who is wise and foolish at the same time? Reckless and organized at the same time? Can someone's wise decisions lead to disastrous consequences? Well, there is a historical figure who came to be popularly known as the wise fool. He was quite the genius, but his actions failed to carry his own legacy. That person is Muhammad bin Tuklaq. You might have heard his name before as you have studied about him in your history books back in school or in college. So, a bit about this guy. He is perhaps one of the most interesting and fascinating sultans who rule over endless vast kingdoms in medieval India. I mean his kingdom was so big that it ran through the northern stretch of the Indian subcontinent to the Deccan. And he was on the throne from 1325 to 1351 AD and he was the only well-educated sultan. Despite his greatness, Tuklaq had quite the notorious reputation of falling into unforeseen disaster situations. Well, not that unforeseen as it was mostly his hasty and impulsive decisions that landed him in the set circumstances in the first place. Hence, he was nicknamed the wise fool. I mean, he was wise, no doubt, no doubt, but an unfortunate fool in the same breath. You might all be wondering, why was he called the wise fool? Well, let's dive into the bit of history that gave him this infamous nickname. Heavy taxation. Paying taxes is important to keep the economy floating. We all know that. So in order to maintain his massive army, Tukluk largely relied on taxes paid by his subjects, primarily farmers, and a heavy one at that. It must have been hard for them, as the heavy taxes burdened the farmers, and they took to other occupations to escape paying taxes. This resulted in the unprecedented shortage in food supplies and chaos. Second of all, shifting his capital. I mean, Imagine shifting to a new place or a new house. It is greatly inconvenient, especially if you have a big family. You'll have to move a lot of things like furniture, electronics, and a lot of other stuffs. And also you have to adjust to the new surroundings and the new environment. In the case of Tukluk, he decided to shift an entire capital from Delhi to a place called Daulatabad in Maharashtra. You can just imagine that with horse-driven cars being the only mode of transport back in the day, this plan would be the perfect recipe for disaster. He had his own reasons for arriving at such a crucial decision. As his kingdom was spread over a significantly large area, he felt it would make more sense and offer him a more convenient location to rule from if his capital was placed in the central part of his kingdom. But yeah. Surprise, this did not end well. He further complicated the task by ordering his subjects to also move to the new capital. Yep, this did not end well, as the long journey led to the death of many of the travelers out of starvation and fatigue. To make matters worse, Tukluk hit the retreat button after establishing his capital in Daulatabad. So yeah, it was evident that he was quite an indecisive fellow. In his defense though, he had the outbreak of a plague and revolts in Bengal to blame. 
He was wary of the fact that his absence in Delhi might make it susceptible to being overtaken by his enemies. Another hasty decision that brought about complete chaos was the replacement of brass and copper coins with that of silver and gold. Brass and copper being considerably cheaper than gold and silver enabled the common people to mint their own coins. Counterfeit coins flooded the market and the economy took a tumble. As you can tell, Tukluk endeavored to establish revolutionary changes during his reign. But what he lacked was the proper planning and execution. He failed to execute his plans at the right place and at the right time. Hence they all backfired. And this is why he is now remembered as the wise fool. So that's it guys. Now we all know who was the wise fool and why he was given this nickname. If you have more facts or more reasons to why Muhammad bin Tuklaq was called the wise fool, be free to comment down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one.